about the language. No? Yes, exactly. I think that it is very important to know what was the composer's mother tongue. Because they learned to speak before they learned to play, let alone compose. And that has, I feel, a very direct influence on the sound than that one must look for in performing these pieces. Now, it may be an accident of a geographical accident that Beethoven was born in Bonn in Germany, but that was his first language. And therefore, I am sure that consciously or the subconsciously, as he began to write the music, there was a connection to the language. And this is why there is a very clear difference between all the German composers and Debussy. Mm -hmm. And you <laughs> see that by, it's not a question of pronunciation only, you see that by the weight of the consonants, because a sound starts with a consonant practically. You can slide in and start out of nothing, but basically it has a beginning, and that is a consonant. Now you can make ta, you can make da, you can make uh, many different mm -hmm. kinds. Yeah, mm -hmm. but you know, and when you think of the German language, I as a non-German <laughs> was always very curious about the weight of the consonants. I mean, in English you say sister, in French, you say sir. In Italian, you say sorella. In Spanish, you say hermana. And in German, you say schwester. Schw before the power. Well, this is the beginning of the Beethoven chord, if you see what I mean. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, composers learn, uh, some of them, several languages. I mean, Pierre Boulez was French, but he spoke so many languages, and the sounds, the, the structure is almost Germanic, the structure of his works, but the sound is French. And I think, for me, that's something that has interested me very much. So this, this anglicized globalization is actually, actually... Um, Detrimental. Detrimental. I mean, it's detrimental to thinking, too. Um, but, um, you know, because you said Beethoven coming from, from Bonn to Vienna. And um, it's interesting because, uh, okay, the, 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 the Rheinland has its, its sort of melodic sing-sang, um, sound and 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 um, approach and the mentality and it's not entirely unlike the yeah, sing sang no. and the the um, there's a religious background there's a cultural background that is that is not dissimilar even the 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 authority was in a way uh, i mean the you know the the whatever it was the 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 it was not an archduke, it was an archduke in, who was sent to Bonn by Vienna. There, there were lots of connections, but, but um, language, language um, is an expression of our, our culture, of our, how we construct our, our reality. And maybe there was not such a big difference in, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm asking, in, in Beethoven's case. Um, no, but it was German. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and the, the, well, I mean... I, I, I think it's more important the sound of the language 
is the relations between consonants and vowels than the melody to differentiate. Yeah. Now that's interesting because, uh, you know, the consonants are completely different in Vienna than, than, than they would be in, in Cologne, for example. Because, um, or, or the Rhineland. Um, um, because everything is softened down. There is no T as such. It's a, you say, this is a, a dish with a D. Yeah. <laughs> And, um, and uh, a P. Um. I don't remember now offhand how old Beethoven was when he went to Vienna. But he went twice. He was very young when he went w the first time. He was, I think, 18 or so. And then he went back and then a few years later yeah. he came back. But he early 20s. But 18 years here. But your, 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 your understanding and, uh, or your, your usage of your idiom is set. The usage of idiom, and for instance, if I have in my, in my experience as an opera conductor, I have noticed quite often singers that sing in a language that they don't speak, they can learn if they are sensitive and if they are willing to put in a lot of work, they can learn the pronunciation perfectly. What is much more difficult is for them to learn the rubato of the language. Mm. What mm. goes with what, and is it interrupted, or is it together, and all that. Um, but this is uh, beyond the... But um, 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 meaning as such, you know, the, the, every word has a meaning and you can't find a musical, direct musical analog to that, right? Um, I mean, in a way it's odd to speak in words about music. It, it almost but feels... But we never speak about music. We speak about our reaction to it. Yes. Look, I play for you a recording of the Mozart G minor symphony and you are in a very depressed mood. You will find the piece absolutely depressing, tragic. I play you the same performance in a day when you are very happy and relaxed, and you will find the happiness in the music, because music never expresses only one kind of emotion. Music, I always say, I repeat myself, but I am convinced of that music very seldom laughs or weeps. It's usually a combination of the two. Mm. And this is the difference with life with music and life without music. So in a way, that's, it's, it's, it's very similar to that experiment. They, they, I think it was Prudovkin, the, the Russian filmmaker, in the very early times of, of uh, cinema, that they, to, to show the power of montage, they used, used the same image of an old woman and then they cut it together with uh, a, a baby and they used the same image and they cut it together with a plate of uh, food, the same image of the woman, they cut it together with uh, soldiers and, and people would always connect the two and they said oh this woman she is she is worried about about her son in war this woman is very hungry and this woman is endeared by the little baby but it was always the same the same image so um in a way no no image exists on its own in cinema it always exists in connection, in sequence, and it only makes sense as time passes. I, I feel there is, a, there is a, a very similar thing going on in music. Of course. It's absolutely parallel. It's absolutely parallel. You play, for instance, the second subject of the Appassionata Sonata on its own. And then you play the Appassionata from the beginning. 
and you get to the second subject and the second subject will sound completely different, will sound completely different. So there is, in my mind, no question that it is impossible to describe what music means, what music says. One thing I know for sure is I don't believe one can use music for other purposes. Music has the effect to excite people into war or whatever mm. it is, or for sense, but you cannot use it for other purposes. What would another purpose be? Well, look, for instance, there is a wonderful uh, project in Venezuela, El Sistema, yeah. with the orchestra mm. that uh, Abreu, Abreu founded yeah. and Gustavo yeah. Dudamel um, conducted. It was done to help young people from poor families, some with drugs and many other things. Wonderful social idea. And it's wonderful that these children started, were musicians. But after a certain point, the musical growth must be again independent from the project. Look at the West Eastern Divan. Who would have thought mm. 21 years I ago, see what you're saying. 21 years ago, there was, there were seven Syrians. I remember that exactly. I don't remember how many Israelis, how many Palestinians, but there were seven Syrians. Syria is a country that has been toughest in the war against Israel. And I made it a point to sit the orchestra in the strings where they sit to, to a stand from enemy countries. Basically, to see how the experiment works. And, you know, Syrian uh, publicity claimed all Israelis were murderers, and Israeli publicity claimed all Syrians were murdered. So these young people in the late teens or early 20s came with that information. No Israeli had ever read a Syrian newspaper and vice versa. And I watched them at the beginning and there was basically mm -hmm. a, 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 a physical and human distance that was inevitable. But what did they have to do? They had to tune the A, the same A. So they had to do that. They tuned the A the same way, so it's the same way. Then throughout the rehearsal, they had to play the same dynamic, the same phrasing, the same everything. Three hours of that, and another three hours in the afternoon. By the time they went to dinner, the enmity had not gone away, of course not, but there was a completely different way but fortunately, I never made the mistake to say, you have to become friends. Mm -hmm. I only said, you have to find a way to play yeah. together, to play the same way and make a team. So it's been very flattering for me that for 21 years, so many people have said that this is orchestra for peace. Of course, it's not an orchestra for peace. Yeah. It's an orchestra for human contact. This is something completely different. But I, I've, I find that in, in almost everything where people need to work together or get along with each other, that they need a third. If you, you have two, two opponents, so to say, they need a third subject that can be theirs Linking. in common. Because then it's not personally directed, it is via um, a third subject that we can find uh, a, a common purpose. And I find that um, because, you know, the, it, I'm coming back to the audience uh, and performer. It's the music that combines them, so they have a common project. I mean, th those are the, 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 
the elating and and most most actually the happiest moments that I have uh, in my life to be part of this of this common project to to really to be present in that music. And I don't need to know the performer. I don't even need to admire or like him um, if the music becomes the common, the common project for the evening. Nevertheless, in the West Eastern Divine Orchestra, we have one uh, principal clarinet player who is Palestinian. And as you know, in the symphonic repertoire, there are many cases where there are solos for the clarinet. But when this Palestinian young man plays, everybody wishes him well. Everybody wishes to help him musically, not too loud, not too short, not too long, not accents, etc., 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 regardless of where they come from. So music has a unifying aspect, but it cannot be used yeah. 